All right, welcome back to the Don Bull Chevrolet Morning Show here on WHIG TV. We've got our special guest in the house this morning, uh, Dr. Deborah Lamb, who is a retired uh, uh, president of Edgecombe Community College, and Norris Tolson, who's the president and the chief go getter at uh, Carolina Gateway Partnership. Um, thank you all for being here this morning. We're going to talk about some exciting things going on in our community and our region. We're excited to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity. So I'm going to start with you real quickly, Dr. Lamb. I thought you were retired. I am retired, <laughs> but I can do some work throughout the day and have enjoyed this initiative working with the partnership. We, well, we let her stay retired one day. One day, there uh -huh. you go. And then we reached out and grabbed her. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I've appreciated you, Dr. Lamb, for what you've done with Edgecombe Community College and, and our community as a whole. You know, we sat on some boards That's of the good. chamber together we and did, did some things. And you've always been a very strong, active person in our community and set an excellent example for what, what our community can strive to be. And I appreciate what you've done for us. Well, thank you. I've enjoyed it. Well, and you've got some exciting stuff coming on here. So I'm, I'm going to hit it right on the notion because we have a lot to talk about. There's this new initiative with these jobs coming to the area. So let's talk real quickly about just, you know, the ones that people know about. CSX, Corning, Triangle Tire, those three are the big ones. Um, we have the, the, the cold storage business that's coming to Tarboro. Um, we have expansion in, at Cummins and Pfizer that's going on. There's a lot of jobs going to come online in the near future. Where are those jobs going to come from? Let, let me set the stage for that and try to set the stage for that. You, you identified the, the targets well. Mm -hmm. But Edgecombe and Nash are in the fortunate position. Today we have 2,500 jobs that have already been committed to the counties mm -hmm. from these industries you talked about. And so what well, we've been working on, Dr. Lamb helping us and, and Josh Tatum in our office and others in the Workforce Development Group, trying to identify what is the source of this line of talent. Where are we going to get the people mm -hmm. to fill these jobs? Uh, and so out of that has come a program that we call Ramp East, which is a, a, a coalition of, of 10 counties and eight community colleges working together to create the pool mm -hmm. from which all these industries can hire people. And that, that's a monumental task. And when you think about 2,500 guaranteed jobs that have right. to come online in the near future, right. You know, there's a lot of, you know, Eshkin County has a high unemployment. Next 18 months, by the way. 18 right, 18 months. months. We wow, have that's close. Have those you used to say three there. years. Now it's 18 months. That's it's getting right. closer and closer. All right. So if you look at the 10 county area around us, so you take just a five county immediate area touching Nash and Eshkin County, and then you look around, there's a lot of unemployment, a lot of, of, of capital that can be trained and employed. Right. Right. But how do we get them from potential to actual employees? So let, me, let me respond to that first, and then Dr. Lamb, that's her world. Mm -hmm. Let me emphasize to you and to your audience that Ramp East is not a training program. Mm -hmm. Ramp East is a marketing program. Right. It is an effort to say to the people in these 10 counties and others around that will hear about it that we've got all these wonderful job opportunities if you are amenable to a new job. And what, what Dr. Lamb and Josh Tatum have discovered in their study is that We've got about 25,000 people in the 10 county area that we've identified mm -hmm. that have reached out to the workforce, the work first workforce development system to say, I want a job, I want a new job, or I want a better job. Mm -hmm. And so we now have a, a target of adult learners, if you want to call them that, who have said, we're ready for a change. What we want to do is reach into that pool of adult learners and say, we're ready for you to make a change. We've got a program that will get you ready to be interviewed and hired mm -hmm. by these companies that are looking for employment. Now, the reason the 10 counties is important, Clint, is that right now Pfizer recruits from 17 counties. Mm -hmm. Cummins recruits from like 15 counties. And almost everybody in the twin counties are recruiting from surrounding counties. Right. So it made sense to us to reach out to territory beyond Nash and Edgecombe to say, these jobs are going to be here, mm -hmm. and if you want to drive here to work, that's wonderful. The other thing, and I don't mind making this comment to you, the other thing we're interested in is all those folks that are now driving to Raleigh mm -hmm. to work, we want to bring them home. Right. Mm -hmm. We want to get them back into our counties because the jobs are now here. We've got Absolutely. the jobs for them. Or the ones who live in Raleigh and drive to Rocky Mountain. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Either exactly. way. So, and you know, that's been a, a strong part of it. I, I want to throw this out there real quick. I know you've talked about this before last year, but Triangle Tire, to kind of talk about what their expectations for their, their vendors and suppliers and their proximity to 
Edgecombe County is, is intended to be? Well, Triangle is right now in the process of selecting a general contractor to build a plant. And at least one of those general contractors reached out to us last week at Carolina Gateway and said, we'd like to come to your place and hold a vendor fair. Mm -hmm. We'd like subcontractors to come in and visit with us about being a subcontractor on this project. Right. We gladly said, come on down, and I think it's next week they're going to be here, and they're going to be interviewing a number of subcontractors to put into their bid to build the plant. So when we say economic development, which is what Carolina Gateway Partnership is about, right. it's not just about bringing a business here. It's not just about the number that's called jobs. It's not just that statistic. This has real-world impact on so many things beyond just that initial statement. The, the, the peripheral impact is really hard to measure because, as you know, we are recruiting uh, Triangle's vendors as we speak. We don't have anybody on the hook yet, right. but we are reaching out to all of their vendors to say, wouldn't it be nice if you were sitting next door to your major customer? Mm -hmm. And some of those we think will wind up coming. But in addition to that, uh, I'm working with Alan Matthews here in Rocky Mount. We are starting to look at what do we do out there around the Kingsborough site to create retail opportunity. Mm -hmm. We don't do retail at Carolina Gateway. That's right. Alan and his team. But reach out, or Alan and the city, we reach out, we, he, he and I reach out to people who might want to be in the vicinity around the Kingsborough site with retail activity. Right. And we've got some interested parties already. That's excellent news. Oppor excellent opportunities. That just means benefits for everybody. Exactly. So, Dr. Lamb, this uh, Ramp East uh, marketing initiative, which also includes a component of training, but this is something that y'all are bringing on board that you've done, and, and you know, a lot of businesses, and even, even schools, take risks and sometimes kind of a blind risk. They're like, we think this is a good idea, let's just go try it. This has got empirical information and research behind it. You're not just throwing this out there to, to hope it works. You're actually doing this in a very um, almost scientific, business-like, intentional manner to say, we're going to try this and we're going to approach it because of this evidence that backs it up. 25,000 potential candidates that they are looking for some sort of job improvement or change. What is Ramp East and what is this 10-county consortium opportunity all about? Sure. Ramp East stands for Regional Advanced Manufacturing Pipeline mm -hmm. for Eastern North Carolina. It involves the 10 counties that we mentioned, uh, Nash, Edgecombe, Wilson, Martin, Halifax, Pitt, Beaufort, Bertie, Hertford, and Northampton. And within those 10 counties, there are eight community colleges that serve those areas. Uh, Nash, Edgecombe, Wilson, Halifax, Martin, Pitt, uh, Beaufort, and Roanoke, Chihuahua. Right. All of those, um, community colleges are already in the business of training. Mm -hmm. So we thought if we, again, start this marketing initiative, reaching those individuals, how are we going to get them into the training programs? We know the citizenry is out there. Right. Um, so we wanted to create this initiative that would have multiple entry and exit points mm -hmm. out of this pipeline. And to do so, we looked at what our target audiences would be. Mm -hmm our high school population, right. our college student population, um, our military population, and then finally the uh, adult population. Right. That population that's employed or unemployed mm -hmm. or underemployed. We feel really good about the outreach efforts already being done in the high school and college populations. Right. And certainly in the military sector, we know that uh, some initiatives are already underway. But we were trying to identify a, a harder to reach group, the adult population, and, and how might we do that? Well, one of the things that we've been very excited about is that um, Regions L and Q, which would be workforce development regions here right. in North Carolina, are going to be hiring two recruiters, one in each region, mm -hmm. who will work within the NC Works Career Centers. And they will help to identify these individuals who are applying for jobs at the career centers. They'll be looking for those individuals who want a job in the manufacturing sector, mm -hmm. pull them out, and refer them to the local community college. And once they're, they're referred to the local community college, then you've got staff people who will be looking closely at those um, resumes mm -hmm. and the educational backgrounds and work experiences of these individuals and try to put them in an appropriate program of study. Mm -hmm. 
One of the things that we're doing uh, that we're excited about is the starting of an advanced manufacturing institute at each of the eight community colleges. Oh, wow. Because what we want to do is to establish an entry level skill set mm -hmm. that every uh, job candidate mm -hmm. can provide or offer to the employer. Well, we're talking about probably a 90 plus hour program of study that would include a certificate of career readiness, um, OSHA 10, mm -hmm. some safety training, um, math and measurement, soft skills integrated throughout all of these modules, and the types of programming that our employers say we want our entry level folks to have. And so we'll develop that program, and we are actually in the process, process of doing that now. Our local community colleges will then go out to their local employers and say, this is what we've developed, tell me what you think. What are we missing? What do we need to add? And then we're going to uh, call that group back together and fine tune this institute so that it does meet the needs of our local employers. We hope to offer, um, I guess, a trial run right. in April yep. um, so that all community colleges can have at least one opportunity to um, offer the program, review it, evaluate, and then we're going to call that group back together and say, what worked? Maybe right. what didn't work and how can we make this better so that when we offer full speed, move full speed ahead, we'll know that the program of study is, is going to run uh, smoothly and be effective for our uh, particular employers. So with the, this program, and again the pilot program in April, so if anybody is actually interested in this, are these people in the pilot program already pre-identified or is this something that people can still sign up for? They certainly can sign up for it and call their local community college to do just that. So if somebody's looking for you know the opportunity to get on the front end of this be part of this training initiative and be, be, be both a guinea pig and a beneficiary of it and then also be able to be able to give input into what this is giving them and how it may be tailored for the next employer. Mm -hmm. That's a real front end opportunity for somebody who's interested in improving their career. Absolutely. You, you made a couple of statements there that I want to I want to zero in on on both the high end and low end. In terms of you know job readiness, the skills that these folks are going to come out with mm -hmm. ready to hit the ground running. You know, this isn't just for Triangle Tire. This isn't for one employer. This Correct. is for a broad employer base. So you're Correct. basically giving them necessary skills that right now today, we have people who want jobs but don't have the skills. You're Correct. giving them the skills to make themselves employable. Correct. That's, that's very critical. But also having those skill sets raises our attractiveness for other new jobs and new Absolutely. industries as we're recruiting into this community. How important is that? Well. That's kind of where we started this process mm -hmm. about a year ago. We started looking at it. Wouldn't it be nice if we in the twin counties could create a competitive advantage for ourselves by being able to say to a client who's here looking for a mm -hmm. place to put an industry, be able to say to them, not only do we have the people that can fill your jobs, we have an inventory already in the pipeline yep. ready to go to be l recruited mm -hmm. by your company. And then all of a sudden we ran, it, ran into that wonderful opportunity. We got 2,500, we got to go do that for right now. I want to come back to something Dr. Lamb said though. I want to be sure that you understand and that your audience understands that this program, while we're going, for, we're going after adult learners, mm -hmm. equally important to us is stepping back into the high school. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Starting at about the eighth or ninth grade and starting to say to young people at that age, you can have an opportunity for a really good job right here at home. If you, just if you choose to go on to the community college for further training, that's great. Right. If you want to go on to a four-year college, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But if you choose not to do that, there is right. a wonderful job opportunity for you right here. The other area that I'm excited about, and we talk a lot about it when uh, Dr. Lamb and Josh and we are together, is the military. Mm -hmm. We believe that recruiting, retiring military people who have been moved to North Carolina to be on our bases right. is a great opportunity. And you read my mind, I was going to go right mm -hmm. here because when you're reintegrating military folks in, into back in the private sector and, and finding jobs, it, it's easy for them to typically find jobs in, in law enforcement or other careers, but in the rest of the real world, sometimes it can be a challenge because it's not necessarily college experience, it's a different kind of experience. Jobs like manufacturing, where you have an organized structure, mm -hmm. where you have management right. positions, and that's going to, that was the top end. I talked about the low end before. I'm going to talk about the top end. Now that's where military kind of comes into it. Management positions, supervisory positions, have also been a challenge in our region. And this is another one of those opportunities with these jobs coming online, with what right. you're able to do with this consortium to provide these businesses, these manufacturers, with managers to help steer and supervise this talent. How important is that? 
Right, let me comment on that. We're working really hard right now, for example, to get inside the military loop to understand mm -hmm. how far in advance of a retirement we need to start talking to a retiree. Right. Because when we, when we look at a military retiree, we tend to think that we're recruiting two people, not one, mm -hmm. the retiree and a spouse. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if we can get inside the loop and start to get the information to the potential retiree that these jobs are available, right. many of these people who meet, move here from other places in the country who want to stay here mm -hmm. will find an opportunity to stay here. And we're, 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 we're getting some pretty good reception from the military folks that we're dealing with, retirees and others, mm -hmm. who are saying, we will help you navigate that path. And we think that's going to be a very successful part of our recruiting effort. Well, we hope and, so. And again, the pipeline for the military, and for those who, who don't know, the military is not all full of officers. There's a lot of folks who have done 20 years in the military just, you know, fixing jeeps and planes and that right, kind of right. stuff. Mm -hmm. They have an excellent skill set that certainly translates into the real world. But there's also and plenty of those who have that, that supervisory mm -hmm. experience of dealing with, with people and capital. And, you know, and people understand this, when you run a, a military department, you have a profit and loss statement. You're just as in, involved in that as anybody else, hiring and firing. And so bringing that kind of resource into our community, into our business world, is also just as valuable, in my opinion, as bringing our current talent base up to the skill set level needed to get the jobs that are going to be offered well, we, If you think about advanced manufacturing, which is what a lot of our emphasis mm -hmm. is on because of the types of businesses we have, every, every advanced manufacturing company that recruits somebody to work in their plant, regardless of what the job is, they're looking for somebody who's disciplined, yeah. who knows how to be trained or has already been trained, who understands that they have to be at work at 8 o'clock in the morning, five days a week, Three or whatever, the whatever the shift work <laughs> calls yeah. for. And, and military folks, that's kind of the mentality they, they live in. Mm -hmm. It's a very structured environment. Yeah. And that's what advanced manufacturing is. So there you go. So with this ramp east, there's a lot of opportunity for, for our area. This isn't just going to benefit the Twin Counties. Even that's though right. Twin Counties that's is right, right now where there's a lot of hot opportunity, Pitt County is going to get a, a new employer, and, and, and Roanoke County and, and that area, they're going to get new employers as well. This benefits everybody, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. Um, how, how long do you expect this initiative to be? Is this a permanent thing, or is this, you know, something you're looking to do for the next five years? What's kind of the, the intention here? Would you well, say this long-term? We, we, we hope that mm -hmm. we're instituting a model that will be in existence forever. Mm -hmm because the current workforce system in North Carolina is very difficult to navigate. Uh, the, 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 the workforce program, while it's well intended and a good program, does not operate very well mm -hmm. and is not user friendly. What we're hopeful is the program we're creating will be replicated all across North mm -hmm. Carolina. Department of Commerce, Secretary mm -hmm. Copeland, for example, is very involved with us in the development of this program. And if we can make it work, then he'll be able to take it and, and go to Charlotte, who's right. got the same problem we got. And replicate it there. Yeah, right. and replicate it. Greensboro, mm -hmm. Winston-Salem, Raleigh, even Raleigh. Mm -hmm. uh, Raleigh unemployment, as I understand it right now, is about 1%. So they're, f they're basically fully employed. Right. Mm -hmm. And so everybody is looking for people that work in their plants and their businesses. We hope this program will be able to be replicated and it'll be a long-term sustainable effort for the state of North Carolina. So this is a, a ser serious and significant investment in, in the state of North Carolina, not just East exactly. North Carolina. Exactly. Not, not, only in, not, not only in time, but in money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Department of Commerce has got a fair amount of money that they put into workforce training, workforce development. Has not always been well spent. Mm -hmm. They admit that. And what we're trying to do is help them create a program that will, in fact, be sustainable, mm -hmm. creditable, and, not, and most importantly, be accepted by the business community. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're doing that obviously with the input from the business community. You're, you're getting right. what their feedback and what their needs are. And yeah. I know community colleges and, and Edge County Community College is a perfect example of what they've done with Cummins and so forth and mm -hmm. tailoring structured learning. But this goes beyond that, does it not? I think it does because it is a collaborative effort that involves many agencies. Mm -hmm. So once you put the structure in place, uh, I believe it is going to be sustainable in long term. Um, because once you start something that's it's working, uh, you're going to continue mm -hmm. and maybe even um, improve it a little bit or tweak it a little bit along mm -hmm. the way to ensure that every year you're meeting the needs of your local employers. And that's really what this is all about. And then making um, a climate mm -hmm. that is attractive right. to other industries that might want to look at North Carolina. One of the splendid and peripheral values of this program working really well mm -hmm 
is that site consultants that we deal with in our world talk to each other. Oh yeah. And once the reputation gets out there that North Carolina has really got its act together on providing people to work in their facilities, that is a major recruiting asset. Well, that works even to a different aspect. If we look at the community college system mm -hmm. and the value that the community college system is putting back into their communities and providing, that, that's, your, that's your goal. But what this Absolutely. does for East North Carolina is in this initiative. But let's talk about the instructors, what their opportunities are going to be, an opportunity to recruit outside of, of North Carolina, even into the Northeast where there's a lot of manufacturing experience. The talent that you can bring to share that knowledge, to train our, our, our future employees, how, how valuable is that? Well, certainly community colleges have the um, opportunity to bring in instructors from anywhere in the world to provide instruction in a program such as this or in any type of customized training for local industries. And that's, I think, the value of working with the community college system in North Carolina right. because that capability is already there. And so, yes, when you bring in these top-notch instructors providing state-of-the-art training, um, you don't know that they're not going to want to move here and bring their family mm -hmm. because they see what type of a programming we have in place here right. that is just not one county, it's multiple counties and statewide. So I think it, it, it opens up some huge doors for us. Oh, it does. And again, East North Carolina, and I'm, you know, you know me, I have no filter. East North Carolina sometimes gets um, a little shifted in terms of where things are focused on in, in the state of North Carolina. A lot of focus, and, and not, not unnecessarily, but a lot of focus goes to the larger metros. And the rural areas sometimes don't get as much need as, as, they, as they would get. This is going to bring a spotlight to East North Carolina, so. not just to the, to the Twin Counties, this entire region that has a need for employment, that has a need for economic development that goes back into the overall economy. Because these employees, they buy houses, they rent apartments, they buy cars, right. they right. go to restaurants, <laughs> right. they, they need to go to Walmart and all, all the restaurants around here. That's and right. if they don't have the cash and the capital, if they're on unemployment assistance and other means that, that is not of their own, that's not helping this community. These are, these are the feeder programs, the cedar programs of a giant economic life cycle of our, our, of our region. That's correct. Um, one of the other things I'm also fascinated with here is, the, the, again, with the community college system. You think of schools, and again, we're, we're sitting here on Wesleyan College, and, mm -hmm. and, and there's always that um, <coughs> cooperative competition that kind of mm -hmm. goes in that. Sure. You're, you're, all, you know, you're, you're oftentimes fighting for the same student who has to choose one or the other, depending on what their needs are. With this, you've got eight community colleges working together to help their students in the local community. This isn't about competition, is Correct. it? Correct. Correct. Nothing about this um, is related to competition. It's about doing the, what's the best thing for your service area mm -hmm. and for your citizenry. And so um, these community colleges, I think they've come to the table just really wanting to help out, to be a part. and. Um, uh, to make a statement to their local employers that w we're here to, to meet your needs and this is how we're going to do it uh, at least at this point and with your input. So uh, it's very, very positive, very positive and I'm just excited to see uh, that that competition is not a part of, mm -hmm. of this program and it's um, just nothing but uh, how can I help? What can we do to make this I, I'm work? I'm coming from the political world and the business side of things. I am really impressed at how the community college presidents have all been at the table, almost every meeting unless something else kept them away. Right. Yeah. But they, we've been doing this now for a year, mm -hmm. especially with the core six. Right. And then we mm -hmm. went to eight here recently. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed though how they've all come to the table with the same desire, the, the stated desire and intent of, we need to create a program that will help our local people. Mm -hmm. And if along the way we haven't helped Nash and Edgecombe, that's wonderful. But if we get the program in place that we're trying to put in place, and I think we will, I'm pretty sure we will, uh, they will benefit it from it, benefit from it greatly in their candidate. Because their people, their local industries need the same kind of employees that we need. Yep. They've got attrition rates and they've got all sorts of hiring opportunities that, they, that are going to occur in their communities. Right. This program is in place. The, the people that will fill those jobs will be readily available to them. Let me say this before I forget to say it this morning. We are working really hard to have somewhere between five and 700 people in this training program before year end. Wow. So that we can, have a, we can have a cadre of five to 700 people that triangle and corning and, 
and all the other companies that are coming to Nash and Edgecombe counties and surrounding counties right. to pick from. Once these 700 people are trained, mm -hmm. they then have all the basic, same basic skills, and so an employer can look at them and say, it's kind of like the good housekeeping seal of approval. These people, have, they're ready to go to work. I can hire them and put them into my operation and do whatever advanced training right. I need to do because I know they have the capability to do it. Well, and, and before we change subject here at the end of this, this interview, I want to talk about advanced manufacturing. The stereotypical thought about manufacturing is you're pulling a widget, you're, you're bolting something yeah. in, you're, you're, you're welding something together. Advanced manufacturing, the skill set needed for advanced manufacturing offers our region significantly skilled jobs. It's not an right. unskilled job. Right. It is oftentimes highly automated, deals with a lot of uh, computers and electronics. Right. You've got to know your role in, in, in with lean manufacturing, just-in-time inventory management. There's a lot that goes into manufacturing in general, but advanced manufacturing is its own breed. Bringing advanced manufacturing to, to Rocky Mount, or more of it, let's, let's be clear about that, more of it, is so important to the long-term sustainability of jobs in this area because we've seen industries change in this community. We've seen mm -hmm. agricultural change. We've seen our banking change. We've seen the fast food. Things come and go over time. Employers shut down. Uh, you look at the original uh, textile manufacturing. Things change. Advanced manufacturing and what we bring to the skill set that you're all going to help provide and the, the, the capital and the employee that you provide, this is a long-term sustainability for our region. How, how important is advanced manufacturing, and what is that skill set, if you wouldn't mind defining that? Well, um, I think the skill set is um, soft skills. Mm. It's math and measurement. It's um, problem solving, critical thinking. Um, it is uh, robotics. Mm. It is understanding the processes that are a part of that particular um, industry. And uh, in order to even improve um, that knowledge base, our community colleges are offering pre-hire courses for industries, as we will for Triangle Tire and some right. of those others, where you teach the culture of the industry in that 24 hours, as well as some of those other uh, things that I just mentioned. So, and culture is so vitally important with advanced manufacturing, international cultures that it, are part of this. It, exactly. It's, it's, it's vitally important that the employees understand what they're getting into. Uh, absolutely, because it is different from industry to industry, mm -hmm. and as you said, international uh, companies uh, have a different perspective possibly than maybe our United mm -hmm. States one. So you want to make sure that that employee is prepared. So um, we're, we're trying to take that extra step by saying, yes, an institute that we're talking about is great, but if you're going into a particular industry, then let's talk about how you might be successful in a pre-hire course to get you ready to interview right. for uh, those particular companies. So um, one of the things that we thought might be a uh, detriment to us was the um, mindset that industry is a, a dirty place mm -hmm. to work. Oh, and so no. <laughs> we, we have developed um, a video mm -hmm. that right. features our local industries uh, who are manufacturing industries as well as the manufacturing programs within the community colleges. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to get that out to the parents of children, to the children in uh, right. public and private schools, um, everywhere to change the image mm -hmm. that some people still have of a manufacturing industry that's dirty and unclean and not a place, not a good place to work. And so we hope. And the cleanest place. I, I could yes. eat off the floor, floor. at KCST. Yes, yes you, you sure can. KCST, yeah, yeah. You sure can. Off the floor of that. And I'm, I'm not Cummins, joking. Cummins, Rocky Mountain, same, exactly. Uh, same thing. I mean, they're white gloves. They're white everything. They're so, they're hyper paranoid about static electricity and those right. things. They're extremely clean environments. Yes. Tri Triangle uh, will be, they say, and I believe it because I've seen their plants in China, Triangle, when they build here in Kingsboro beginning in May of this year, they say it will be the most advanced tire manufacturing plant in the world. Wow. So it'll be 100% roboticized. It is 100% air conditioned. Every corner of that plant facility is kept, they keep it at 69 degrees, 70 degrees, mm -hmm. so the electronics run. Right. Uh, when Corning finishes their distribution facility out there, it will be robotically driven. State of the art. Yeah, yeah state of the art robotics. But you don't get much more advanced than uh, Cummins Diesel, for example. That's mm -hmm. already there. Mm -hmm. And Pfizer, who are doing marvelous stuff mm -hmm. out here. Most people around here have no clue what an important plant Pfizer is oh, to the American health industry. 25% yep. mm -hmm. of most of the hospital supplies in America come out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. 
That's a big deal. Well, and again, all these things, and this is, this is, you know, talking about the feeder side, the knock-on effect, if you think of the, the logistics side of these things, you know, the manufacturing's right. here, but all the trucking jobs, you know, I heard, right. you know, this week, Walmart's can't find enough truck drivers, so they're starting to pay them $90,000 a year just to yes. attract the drivers. That just raises the industry up. You know, and we've talked about there's going to be a, a significant need for truck drivers in the next 15 years as the current crop right. are retiring right. and moving on, right. and there's not enough new ones coming on board. Mm -hmm. There's so much positive traction going on in our community right now, but the future is even brighter, is it not? Yeah. I mean, the efforts you, and I'm, I'm, I'm pointing at you, right. the efforts you and your, your organization done, our, our, our private partnership, a private public partnership has done. This is a collective community effort, mm -hmm. but you've been leading this for, for a few years now, and the change that is coming here, if you stopped today, if you just shut the doors and said, I'm done today, the, the next 20 years of benefit that we feel from your work is significant enough to change the face of this community. And so that, that cannot be underscored. It really cannot. Would you come speak to my board? <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that's the truth. You, you know, we've talked about this for, I've been on this show, hosting the show now for uh, uh, going on nine years. And in nine years, we've been talking about jobs, 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 mm -hmm. training, the economy, crime, this, that, and the other. As these things come in, you know, again, I mentioned before, we had Hardee's, and Hardee's was, again, it's kind of like all the eggs in one basket. As long as we had Hardee's, everything was great, and we lost it, and everybody's like, oh, no. You know, what are we going to do? And then we had, we had, you know, Centura, and then Centura became RBC, and they were headquartered here, and they left, and all the jobs left, and people are like, well, what are we going to do? We don't have all our eggs in one basket anymore. That's right. We, That's we have right. spread it around, and we've got a few big fish in the area, but if one of those was not to, to, to you know, succeed, we've got other opportunities. Right. And this training program and marketing program, Ramp East, again, Ramp East is a, is a marketing initiative, and I, I hear you with that, but the opportunity to train our employment base to be ready to take jobs as new employers come online, it, again, that is invaluable. Yeah. That, that takes away all the excuses, that yeah. takes away all the effort for anybody to say it can't happen or can't work. And so right. thank you all for doing this because this is an amazing initiative. If somebody's interested in this, if somebody wants to be a part of the pilot or get on board, they're looking for a job change, they're looking for some training, how can they find out more information about it? How do they get in touch with somebody to, to make this part of their reality? Sure, uh, they could contact their local career center. Mm -hmm. uh, they could contact uh, their local community college and uh, speak with the chief academic officer who's actually working with us. Okay. Um, and um, even call the partnership, I guess, Josh yeah, Tatum we, we could, could answer some questions and could get them to the right uh, people. So there are enough individuals, I think, in the in the county, mm -hmm. uh, counties, who can uh, get them to uh, the right place to get the training that they need. Well, y'all here to hear, folks. There's jobs coming. There's training. There's coming. If, if you or some of you know, and we have a lot of folks who, who, you know, have called us up on the show and saying, you know, we need jobs, and I've got family members, my daughter, my son, my cousin, whoever, here's your chance. The ball's starting to roll, and here's your chance to get on the front end of it and be part of a great opportunity to improve your, your, your personal, you know, finances and, and, and upstanding opportunities. Um, <clears throat> do need to take a break here a minute. Before I leave, I want to ask uh, uh, Norris here, breaking news story that came out of, of, of the News Observer today, changing, changing track here a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, another good potential opportunity for Rocky Mount, but I want you to give us the level set. You know, we talked about this off camera. Um, some of us in the community have known about this. The, the, the search for the property for the um, North Carolina DMV headquarters has been announced. This hasn't been a secret, <clears throat> but in terms of where it was going to land, it's still a tenuous kind of situation. News Observer today broke the story that they, you know, they're planning to move to Rocky Mount but that's still not a done deal. Can you kind of set that up for us? Yeah. Well, we've, we've been obviously very, very interested in that project since the onset of the General Assembly of Legislation, saying that the current DMV facility in Raleigh has to be vacated by, I think it's August of 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and the, 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 the statute said that they could move anywhere in Wake County mm -hmm. out of Raleigh or anywhere in surrounding counties near Wake County. Mm -hmm. And so we thought we fit that bill pretty good, and we thought we also had a great property that fit what we heard the specs were for right. that facility. And they, and and they had a specific list of, of what right. a property had to meet in order to satisfy So, so we started promoting our hardest campus. The, yeah, I saw the story that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. However, it is not official. There's nothing official about that until the Council of State 
which are all the elected members of the leadership team that runs North Carolina, including the governor, right. vote on it, and that vote is supposed to be next Tuesday. Uh, once they vote on it, then it becomes official. But yeah, we are a candidate for that for right. that uh, location relocation. And, you know, again, you know, according to Telegram, obviously we would be a leading candidate in terms of what we you're saying. We are a good candidate for that relocation. <laughs> but, you know, there's also other things to consider, and this is a political issue. Let's, let's be fair. This is yeah. going to be a political hot potato. Uh, Wake County doesn't want to lose hundreds of jobs that are based in their, their community. Um, this is one of those crown jewels of state government and operations, yeah. and if it comes to Rocky Mount, that's, that's a battle that, you know, the local legislators there may not want to, want to see that happen to them. But if this was to come to Rocky Mountain, let's just, you know, kind of assume that it might, what is the benefit? What does this bring to us that, you know, I can't describe, you, you can describe better? Well, obviously it, it's a very prestigious uh, announcement to say that a major piece of state government is moving to Rocky Mountain. Mm. It, 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 it's, it's analogous to having Centura headquarter itself in Rocky Mountain or right. Hardy Center resident itself in Rocky Mountain. DMV is one of the most uh, uh, used state agencies in state government. A lot of citizenry goes in and out of those buildings. A lot of commercial Raleigh. business goes in and out of those yeah, businesses. Yeah, and so it, it, will, it will bring a lot of attention to wherever that place winds up being because people will be frequent in those businesses, that, that place to do automotive type business. Right. Uh, not, to say, not the least of which, there's about 480 people that work in that facility. So if it comes to Rocky Mount, that's an influx of another 480 jobs, round numbers. Wow, and, and, and I understand they're not here. taking the whole campus, but taking a big portion of the campus. Well, most of it will, most and, of it will and be And there's room for them to expand, obviously. Yeah, as I understand it, they will, well, you, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah the, the Hardy's campus, there's six buildings out mm -hmm. there, and so I, think, I believe the, the potential contract with them would be for like four of the six buildings. Mm -hmm. um, We'll see. That, we'll see how it works. We're, we're anxiously awaiting next Tuesday to see how the vote comes out. Well, and I, I started the show off talking about this this morning, and, you know, for years we've talked about when people come to the sports complex, which is an incredibly important right. part of our community, and they see that empty building, that empty parking lot over there. And on weekends you wouldn't necessarily expect to see cars, but you don't see a sign, you don't see any activity. And I joked, it blocks the train track. You know, the trains come by, and if you're sitting over there, you can't even see the train because of that, that facility. This, this is a premier, you know, class A facility in Rocky Mount. Right. Rocky Mount doesn't have that many class A type office spaces in our area. And this, this is an incredibly important piece of property for the image of Rocky Mount. Right. And they're not coming here for our image. They're coming here because it's a good place to, to right. be a headquarters. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't hurt our image a bit to have the DMV headquarters that you can see right off of Highway 64 and on Church Street, does it? We agree with that. We think <laughs> it's a great asset to us and a lot of traffic comes into downtown Rocky Mount as you know off that mm -hmm. exit so having DMV if it, if it comes there will be a great asset for us. Well I, again I know you've been working hard on this and, and, in, and your organization has and um, it's always interesting when you know you get these political kind of announcements and things that are going on. I, I, I appreciate you wading through those waters for us so that, that we can benefit from it and then you do all the hard, dirty work. Well, not, not, <laughs> not, not just me. A lot of people in Rocky Mountain have been working on that project. I can't name them all here, but right. a lot of people have been working really hard to, to see if we had a real shot at that project. Well, Norris, uh, Dr. Lamb, I appreciate you all coming in today and, and, and talking to us about what's, what's going on with, with Rocky Mount, Nash Edgecombe, the greater region that we're in. So much good stuff going on. Uh, I have more questions, but we're out of time, we, and we got to get Fred in here to do the weather because apparently it's going to be 18 degrees to, tonight, so mm -hmm. we want to make sure people hear what's going on. But thank you all so much for coming in. Dr. Lamb, thank, thank, thank you for coming out of retirement for one whole day so and, uh, and, and, and bringing your skill set to, to our community again. I'm really, really proud to have you as part of, of leading this initiative. Thank you. I appreciate that. And Norris Tolson, really appreciate your leadership and what thank you're you, doing. Sir. And, you know, it is a private-public um, partnership. You have a, a board that's part of this that's not right. just you. You are the figurehead, but there's certainly um, a lot of people that go in this. And then you have you have your own employees and uh, associates within the uh, organization that are significantly important to this yeah, as well. We're, we're a small group, but we, we're a good group. We've got really good, talented people that are experienced and know what they're doing. And 
we have a good board. The best board in the world is one that lets you do your job. This one does. Don't micromanage it. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I said that for the benefit of one person. <laughs> I understand. All right. Well, again, thank you all for coming in this morning. We'll be right back after these messages with our next look at the weather, and then we'll close out the show.